BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Nerd 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And just a quick reminder every Monday is Zodiac Mondays. Wednesday is an Ask Me Anything. That's an AMA, so please drop your questions below for things that you would like discussed here on the show. And Friday is an Anything Goes. Any subject is fair game, mostly talking about true crime, serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, but any subject is welcome. All right, so please share some ideas in the comment section about what you would like to hear about on this channel, and let's get started. Hello all, and welcome to this special presentation of Black Box Online Radio. Today I sat down with a cup of coffee and I picked up my phone, and I received a string of comments about the Zodiac Killer on some of the previous episodes. And then I began to think about some things that you guys were saying, and some comments that had been left over the previous weeks. And then all of a sudden, something connected and I began to think about the Zodiac Killer mystery in a different way. And I want to just share something with you guys. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe there's something to it. But what do you think about this? The Zodiac Killer operated in 1968 and 69. There are four canonical crimes which resulted in five murders. And two people were injured but survived. So I began to remember something that I had thought of in the past about how fantasy and reality become major components of the Zodiac Killer mystery, particularly with the Lake Berryessa stabbing, which occurred on September 27th of 1969. And we saw the murder of Cecilia Shepard and the stabbing of Brian Hartnell, who was one of the survivors. And that is the only time the Zodiac Killer wore the famous costume with the hood and the clip-on sunglasses, the only time the Zodiac Killer operated during the day, the only time the Zodiac Killer stabbed the victims. When I first read that, that this person murdered people in December of 1968, July 4th of 1969, and then changed his M.O., changed his method of attack from shooting people to stabbing them with a knife, and not only stabbing the victims, but tying up them hog tying them tying their hands to their feet and stabbing them while he's wearing this costume and having the extended conversation all of which had never been done before and then shortly after lake berryessa i mean on october 11th of 1969 the zodiac killer murdered paul stein and it i just thought that was so bizarre i mean and i don't think anyone has ever found a set of crimes that have been exactly like this, not even Jack the Ripper, because the Ripper was primarily about mutilating the bodies of the victims, with the exception of Long Liz Stride. So, I just thought it was so perplexing. Everybody thinks it's a perplexing mystery. It's an unsolved case. But after the Lake Berryessa stabbing on September 27th of 69, the Zodiac Killer also wrote a message on the car door, Automobiles were present at every single Zodiac attack, Lake Herman Road, Blue Rock Springs, Lake Berryessa, and the Stein murder. But that was the only time the Zodiac wrote a message on the car door, and he wrote the Zodiac symbol, he wrote the word Vallejo, and he listed the dates of Zodiac activity, 12 20 68 7 September 27th, but he wrote it out. S-E-P-T, he did not write 927, but S-E-P-T 27, 1969, 6.30 p.m., which, to the best of our knowledge, was the end of the attack, and by knife. In 1970, the Zodiac Killer would mail the Halloween card to Paul Avery. He misspelled the name intentionally, Paul Avery Lee, and that in included something that said, by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire which is consistent with the by-knife writing on the car door at Lake Berryessa. Everybody looks at this as the middle. It's the third Zodiac attack. But what I was thinking about today was something I'd remembered in the past. When I was thinking about the Lake Berryessa stabbing, I was like, this is truly an example of someone 
who's blending fantasy and reality, someone who's wearing this costume, who's trying to attack people, who is successfully attacking people, mind you, and this is some type of twisted fantasy of a madman come to life in the real world. And that's when I really began to think about this, because this is the first crime after the Zodiac had revealed himself to the media, the police, after writing the ciphers. The um, first letter came July 31st of 1969, if I remember correctly. And also, the Zodiac hadn't even used the name at that time. And it's important to remember that after the Blue Rock Springs shooting on July 4th of 1969, the person who made the phone call did not say, this is the Zodiac speaking. I killed those kids last year, and so on. The name Zodiac was not used in the phone call after the murder of Darlene Farron. So you had two crimes that were committed by gun. Lake Herman Road, where David Farron and Betty Lou Jensen were murdered. Blue Rock Springs, where Darlene Farron was murdered and Mike Michaud survived. And then the Lake Berryessa stabbing is the first time that the Zodiac committed a crime after announcing to the world that he was the Zodiac. That is not the third Zodiac crime. It is the first. It is the first for the persona. It is the first for this person and his criminal masterpiece. Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs, those aren't factored into the criminal masterpiece in the same way, because this is when the Zodiac killer announced that he was committing a crime by knife. And the by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire was identified by Tahoe 27 as coming from a Tim Hole comic stating the Wheel of Death. And there's this character named Lady Doom who's spinning the Wheel of Death. And on the cover of that Tim Hole comic, it says, by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire. She's actually a very large literary figure called the Lady of Situations. And shout out to Skating Crow Productions who observed that. All right. The criminal masterpiece truly begins after the Lake Berryessa stabbing. That's why Paul Stein, the taxi driver, is murdered by gun. Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs, yeah, those are the homicidal activities of the same person. Yes, that's the same serial killer, but that is before the persona came to life. The Zodiac truly came to life at Lake Berryessa and committed a crime by knife. The Zodiac murdered Paul Stein by gun. That is a crime that was committed by gun. And then the Zodiac was particip admitted admitted to being the a party to the Kathleen Johns incident where there was an attempted abduction of a woman off of Highway Route 132, March 22nd of 1970. However, Kathleen Johns was not murdered, but somebody, whoever abducted Kathleen Johns, went back to the car and set it on fire. That is the crime that took place by fire. Now, as far as a crime that was committed by rope, I haven't found an exact one. I really thought about this because you guys in the comments section, I think it was Colonel Reb who pointed out how the case breakers had said that their theory, the Adele Julen, was that Donna Lass was murdered in 1970 and her body had been hanged from a tree. Well, that would be a crime involving rope. So I completely do not accept that Donna Lass was a Zodiac killer victim. My personal assessment of the Kathleen Johns incident and how it could factor in to this new theory is that the Zodiac did not commit the crime. Instead, after the Stein murder, there was such a high chance that the Zodiac could have been captured that he decided that he was not going to commit any more crimes, actually committing the murders, and instead focus on the letter writing. This person had done the thrill kill experience. They had lived it as much as they possibly could without getting caught. An important point to remember about serial killers is they have heightened predatory instincts. They are stalking their prey the same way that other hunters would operate with um, different species, except a serial killer is going after people. Horribly immoral, horribly disgusting, but that is one of the psychological components. And many serial killers stop killing because they simply believe if they keep doing this, then they will be captured. Serial killers are also very, very much about power. There's that famous expression, why do people commit crimes, money, sex, and power? And I've said very clearly that 
the power component, but I, I believe so anyway, is the most important in that triad of criminal deviants. So if the serial killer were to be captured, then it would be an absolutely devastating and humiliating experience to someone who's so power-hungry that they were defeated. So instead, the Zodiac resorted to letter writing, and the plan was to commit the Lake Berryessa stabbing by knife, commit the Stein murder by gun. Now, there were two additional crimes that were planned, so I believe anyway, I'm hypothesizing here, but there were two additional crimes that were planned, one by fire and one by rope. However, because the Zodiac came so close to getting caught after the Stein murder, he decided not to go through with it and simply wait and take credit for a crime that would be suitable to this Wheel of Death agenda, the plan to have um, four crimes committed within a 13-month cycle. And I only cite that because of the 13-month anniversary when the Halloween card was mailed to Paul Avery. I could be completely wrong about this, and if you want to challenge me, please put something down in the comments section about this observation. But I believe that the Zodiac took credit for the Kathleen Johns incident simply because it met all the parameters, it checked all the boxes, and it was something that was suitable. That's why it happened so much longer after the Stein murder. Lake Berryessa and the Stein murder are two weeks apart. The Kathleen Johns incident did not happen until 1970, March 22nd of 1970, and the car was set on fire, and I was actually just uh, talking to someone who... Um, who said that there was an older theory out there that Kathleen Johns had committed um, insurance fraud, actually. She set her own car ablaze to get the insurance money and that the Zodiac had nothing to do with it. She just made up the story. But um, by her own testimony, she didn't even have insurance at the time. It was a bogus theory. So she said, anyway, however, I 100% do not believe the Zodiac killer actually tried to abduct Kathleen Johns, because if it were only about committing a crime and incorporating fire into it in some way, then the Zodiac had numerous opportunities to murder Kathleen Johns, even if her child was present. Well, what is it about? Is it about committing a crime by fire, or is it about looking tough in front of somebody before you kill them? What really is going on there? The Zodiac had so many opportunities to do that, and he didn't. Instead, I think that that was just a completely different person, and it took months for the Zodiac to find a crime that was actually suitable to incorporate into this Wheel of Death um, component, if my observation is correct. And as I said, I would love for you guys to dispute this with me down in the comments section below. Let me know where I'm wrong. Let me know where these things don't add up. And perhaps there isn't even a solid crime that was committed by rope that would factor into this Wheel of Death component because the Zodiac simply didn't learn about one from the newspapers that was suitable. However, why not mail in the Wheel of Death anyway? If anything, that'll make it more confusing, and then people will have a more difficult time trying to figure everything out. I mean, if Kathleen Johns had been murdered and her car was set on fire, and someone else had been murdered by rope, then that would have uh, given everything away, so to speak. This makes it even more mysterious. So no matter what, that worked to the killer's advantage, that there was not a crime committed by rope there. So I would love to know what you guys think about this um, attempted wheel of death. I think that that's a way we can view this, the attempted wheel of death theory, that on September 27th of 1969, the Zodiac Killer wanted to start a series of four additional murders and was successful in two of them, murdering Cecilia Shepard on September 27th of 69, murdering Paul Stein on October 11th of 69, but then backed away from the plan because the risk of getting caught was simply too high. Then the Zodiac decided to just learn about a crime from the newspapers and take credit for it, and the Kathleen Johns incident was suitable. That was the crime by fire, by rope, I'm still uncertain on, so I know that that's not the most satisfying explanation for a new discovery, but um, this incomplete wheel of death theory, the attempted wheel of death theory, please weigh it in the comments section below, down below. Tell me what you think about this. But as far as taking credit for murders that he did not commit, I was reading Soren Korsgaard's book, America's Jack the Ripper, and he makes a very compelling case for 
how the Zodiac could have written the Sherry Jo Bates confession letter, not the Bates had to die letters, but the actual Riverside confession that said she was beautiful, but now she is battered and dead. Because Soren looks at the linguistic analysis of everything and points out how there could be very strong similarities in the words with the Zodiac letters compared to the Bates confession, particularly the use of the words twitch and squirm together. So I think that that is somewhat of a well, it, he makes a very good case for it. That means that this person does not have taken credit for crimes that he didn't commit outside of his wheelhouse. But also, I think that the Zodiac definitely, definitely had familiarity with the Bates murder, that this was something that he had learned about previously. Whoever was writing the letters had some intense familiarity about the murder of Sherry Joe Bates. And I've also shared with you guys in the past my own take on the subject that the murder of Sherry Joe Bates took place in 1966, and also 1966, according to the wonderful internet, is when there was a resurfacing of the Frederick Best confession, a man who had confessed to writing at least two of the Jack the Ripper um, letters, for lack of a better term. Really, it's the Dear Boss letter in the Saucy Jack postcard, and that happened in the early 1930s, but then it resurfaced the story resurfaced in 1966 as well. I wholeheartedly believe that the Zodiac Killer was very familiar with Jack the Ripper and most likely very familiar with the Texarkana Moonlight Murders of 1946. So when it came to developing this Zodiac Killer persona, no matter what reason this, the word Zodiac was chosen, whether it's from the Zodiac Watch or it's from the Charlie Chan at Treasure Island movie about a killer named Zodiac, then I believe the Zodiac Killer chose the letter Z first and was going to be some type of killer starting with the letter Z, maybe even just calling himself Z, and then later on chose to add in the other letters to the name and become the Zodiac Killer. And the reason for saying that is that if it is true that the Zodiac had familiarity with the Bates murder, there were these letters that say Bates had to die, there will be more signed with a Z. There's also the Detective Story magazine a publication that had a character named Z and even says this is Z speaking in one of the issues, which is, I mean, that's too much of a similarity to ignore. And then the word Zodiac, as I said, it could have, it could come from the watch, could come from the Charlie Chan movie. It could come simply because the person thought it was a badass sounding word. It thought, he, he thought the word sounded really cool. And not to mention the um, astronomical components that could be involved in some of the things, and people have also theorized in the past about the Zodiac may have been familiar with um, navigation, so to speak. That could stem from an Air Force or Naval background. But to summarize this before we move on to the next part, the discovery that I want to share with you is purely, purely a hypothesis, but it's that the Zodiac was attempting to commit a series of four crimes from September 27th to October 27th of 1970. That's September 69 to October 70. But the Zodiac chose not to do so because the risk of getting caught was too high. The Wheel of Death starts on September 27th of 1969 with the Lake Berryessa stabbing, and the two previous canonical Zodiac crimes are not factored into the Wheel of Death. Please weigh in in the comments section down below. And at this time, I would also like to use this episode as a Zodiac Killer AMA where I can respond to your questions and comments. We can go through the material together and we can have a discussion because I just wanted to share that observation with you guys. But also, let's look at some comments that you have talked, if you, you have shared about the Zodiac Killer case in general. We have one here from I'm Not Paul Avery who says that I think Don Chaney and Arthur Lee Allen were the ones involved. They each committed some of the killings. Cheney created the ciphers and Alan wrote the letters, but Alan tried to frame Cheney by the use of certain words like fry and others that would point toward Cheney. Cheney realized this and reported Alan as wanting to commit killings using the word zodiac and the symbol. This would have thrown all attention toward Alan, which it did and continues in most part to this day. I'm not Paul Avery. I definitely think you've read Drew Beeson's sighting in on the zodiac killer. And I would only challenge you on one point in that. As far as Alan writing the letters, a side palm print or writer's palm was lifted from one of the Zodiac letters and compared to Arthur Lee Allen's, and 
They say that that has eliminated him. However, when I was discussing this with Tom Voigt several months ago, he said that that was the only letter that does have the so-called writer's poem is the 1974 Exorcist letter, which wouldn't be any of the um, letters that you just described. So you can take that for what you will. And my response to that was, I was like, all right, not to fail at my Zodiac knowledge and such, I know the Exorcist letter is regarded as an authentic Zodiac communication, but it came in 1974. It doesn't say this is the Zodiac speaking at the beginning. It also doesn't seem to have some of the esoteric Zodiac language. It's talking about, I saw and think the Exorcist was the best satirical comedy ever, and then it goes into some references from the Mikado. But really, that um, Exorcist line... I didn't think that that was... Something always bothered me about that. And then it goes into um, something equivalent to a threat. If I don't see this note in your paper, then I'll do something nasty, which you know I'm capable of. And there's some funky-looking lettering, which might be fake Japanese. That is honestly what I think the um, theory is. That's my theory on that. That it's just meant to be imitation Japanese. Kevin Brooks did suggest that it could mean to kill, and, uh, oh, Mike Rodelli can correct me if he wants, but I think he thought that the solution to the exorcist uh, markings spell out shell, K-J-E-L-L, -L, because his suspect was named Shell Cavale. Everybody has their own take on that particular subject, but I'm definitely not convinced that Arthur Lee Allen wrote the letters. I will just leave it at that. Daniel Webster also has a comment about Arthur Lee Allen, saying that, um, that this actually came on the episode Arthur Lee Allen and the Murder of Valentine Sally, where the group um, from ZNN, Zodiac News Network, were accusing Arthur Lee Allen of not only being the Zodiac, but committing the 1982 murder of Carolyn Eaton. And before she passed away, she was seen sitting in a restaurant with a man wearing what we can call an ostrich feather hat. And Daniel Webster says, I recognized Arthur Lee Allen. It would be interesting if they could locate the hat with the ostrich feather before his death, but they didn't know it was him. And my interpretation of that comment was, that's actually a really good observation. If these guys do genuinely believe that Arthur Lee Allen committed the 1982 murder of Carolyn Eaton, and he is the man in this cowboy hat with the ostrich feather, was a hat like that ever in Arthur Lee Allen's possession, especially in the 1980s? But that would definitely be something to investigate through records because the police did raid Arthur Lee Allen's home. And we have a comment from Albert Forrell on the older episode, Zodiac Killer, My Personal Theories. And it says, where do you stand regarding, number one, there were multiple letter writers, and number two, Lake Berryessa was a copycat. With the um, second question, was Lake Berryessa a copycat? I've definitely thought about it in the past, but when I did the episode where I ranked the unconfirmed incidents and the likelihood that they were committed by the Zodiac Killer, I gave all the canonical crimes. I said 10 out of 10. I completely believe that they were the Zodiac until I see some convincing evidence otherwise. And, I mean, you, there's always a chance, right? But as of now, I give all of them 10 out of 10. If someone can prove to me, and Evan from Texas said that he is, uh, well, he wants to try and convince me that Lake Berryessa was indeed a copycat, I would love to see why. I would love to hear that. I would love to just hear anybody's take on the subject. But as far as Lake Berryessa being a copycat, I think I laid it out in this episode, which um, Albert hadn't heard yet when he left that comment. But that the Wheel of Death began on September 27th of 1969, and it's someone who is putting destructive fantasies and destructive forms of imagination into reality to actually create this type of comic book villain, a uh, crappy movie star, theatrical stage character into existence. And after the creation of the Zodiac persona and adoption of the Zodiac name in the letters, then the Zodiac chose to act in that fashion, and that is when the Wheel of Death was truly created. But it only went for about two weeks because the person who created it thought, this is just too dangerous, I'm not going to continue committing crimes like this. But multiple letter writers. Now here's another bold statement. The question is, where do you stand regarding multiple letter writers in the Zodiac mystery? I think almost certainly everybody 
I repeat, everybody believes that the, there were multiple letter writers at some point. That someone wrote some letters taking credit for Zodiac crimes. And as far as the confirmed letter writing goes, I mean, I said a little bit about the exorcist letter, but what Tom Voigt wanted to convince me of is that the authorities always have more information than they lead on. If they say that it's authentic, they may have other reasons why, because of certain types of forensic material. And a prime example of this, of multiple letter writers, is many people believe the 1978 letter was fake, that it was a forgery, and there are suspects in that. Dave Toskey has been accused of fabricating it himself. Robert Graysmith has been accused of fabricating the 1978 letter. I mean, we have letters going all the way into the 1980s, as even the Eureka card in 1990, which, um, whether the Eureka card is authentic or not, I think the more interesting thing about it is Eureka, California, allegedly aligns with Gareth Penn's radian, that he, if you put the angle of 57.29 degrees on top of Mount Diablo, but that came out in 1990. Gareth Penn's book about that came out in 1987, so someone would have had three years to learn about that, but the 1986 letter, 87 letter, those are most likely forgeries, fabrications, multiple letter writers. And for the longest time, I thought the Melvin Belli letter was not authentic. I was, I mean, I was all about multiple letter writers because the handwriting is so obviously different. But when you look at the envelopes, that us, and then Sword and Korsgaard featured photos of these in his book, America's Jack the Ripper. You can see in the first Zodiac letter, the Zodiac's handwriting is very sloppy. There's lots of tilt to the side. The Melvin Belli letter is written very neatly. Almost no tilt at all until the final word. But I think that when you look at the envelopes that they were mailed in, the handwriting is kind of in between. It's kind of a little bit sloppy, a little bit of the, of the um, similarities to the Melvin Belli letter in all of them. So either with the all that zodiac tilt to the side. That could just be someone trying to disguise their handwriting, and with the Melvin Belli letter, they're on their best behavior, or vice versa. But an example of another example of multiple letter writers is if you go on zodiackiller.com and you read about the Donna Last postcard, Tom Voigt says that he um, has obtained a confession from someone. We're learning that one of the investigators fabricated the Don Alas postcard. So there are numerous accusations and confessions of, that have come out about how there were multiple letter writers at some point. And we have a comment that came in from Flashcraft on the episode, Just the Facts, the Lake Herman Road Murders. This is the only canonical Zodiac murder that Thomas Horan might have a point on. Someone, might el someone else might have done it, and the Zodiac merely took credit for it. If the Zodiac was a police officer, security guard, or even a gun shop employee, he might have been in a situation to know more about this murder than what was officially reported in the newspapers, thereby know what type of gun and ammo was used when he claimed it to be one of his in the letters. Okay, though, I've talked a lot about that theory in the past, and even without the hoax theory, just that Someone took credit for the Lake Herman Road murders. As I said, I do believe that it's the Zodiac Killer, 10 out of 10, 100%, until proven otherwise. But that's the one that really gets you thinking, because there is an illustration in the police reports of some of the info that the Zodiac talked about. The girl had her feet to the west, the boy had his feet to the car, and there's an illustration of that exact concept. And also, um, the suspect, David Walliot, the local drug dealer, seems more and more likely to have committed the crime every day. And to get to the heart of the issue, the Lake Herman Road murders, the murders of David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, as well as the Blue Rock Springs shooting, appear to have a certain similarity to drug-related or gang-related shootings. And they are definitely crimes that took place before the adoption of the Zodiac persona by name. The Zodiac did make a phone call after the Blue Rock Springs shooting. And in the past, the explanation for that in the hoax theory was that it was just a prank call. Somebody heard about it on the police scanner, and they're just doing it to um, be where they heard the info on the police scanner, and it was a prank call where somebody just called in saying, I also killed those kids last year. No mention of Lake Herman Road. No mention. 
of any type of specific information. And then somebody took credit for the crime that they did not commit. An interesting rebuttal to that has been made by Mark Hewitt, author of Hunter, Hunted, Profiled, and Exposed, a trilogy about the Zodiac Killer. And he says that if the Zodiac Killer did not commit the Lake Herman Road murders or the Blue Rock Springs shooting, how on earth would he have known that the case was, would go unsolved as long as they did? How on earth would that have been possible if he wrote these letters saying, I am the murderer of the teenagers at Lake Herman last Christmas, and he didn't actually do it? But what if someone did end up getting arrested for it? Wouldn't the Zodiac look like an absolute fraud? Wouldn't that just destroy the entire Zodiac killer criminal masterpiece? It would be done so easily. I mean, how d there's no possible way that he could have known that any hoaxer would have known that the cases would have gone unsolved. And I'm sure you guys know what I would say next about that, that the, re the explanation that has been provided from Thomas Warren is that the Lake Herman Road murders and the Blue Rock Springs shootings were done to cover up activities of the confidential informants that worked with the police departments in said counties. For example, that the, the suspect that I talked about, David Walliot, was a confidential informant, an undercover informant. He would be involved with drug busts. Like some people buy drugs from him. Five minutes later, they get arrested. But he was a real drug dealer. He was just, the police are using him as an informant, a person to gather information, and he does all types of sting operations. He practically had immunity because they're doing some very unethical things. But in addition to the stuff that he's doing for the police, he is a real drug dealer, and he is actually committing murders. He was just more or less in an un untouchable place. So if he were ever arrested for the Lake Herman Road murders, well, the police would have perhaps opened up a can of worms about their illegal activities. And believe it or not, the suspected confidential informant at Blue Rock Springs is Darlene Farron herself that maybe she was um, trying to set up somebody such as whoever was coming to meet her that night. And they figured out that it was a setup, and that's why the person started firing the gun. If, 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 those are just possibilities. Uh, to be honest with you, if I had to make a decision now, I have to say that they are confirmed Zodiac activities. But to go to our next comment, we have one from Peter T. who says... Hi, a guy from Slovakia, Eastern Europe here. Not about Shell Cavale. I, that was a response to the episode of Zodiac Shell Cavale AMA. But one thing that the Zodiac has done that has always troubled me is why would he stop killing or at least sending letters if he got a kick out of it after 1974 and he wasn't dead or in jail, disabled in some way? I know there was a copycat killer of the Zodiac in the early 90s in New York. If he was still alive or able to do something, I believe with such an ego like he had, he would have spoken out against the imposter via a letter. Would be interested on your thoughts on this issue. Well, firstly, the Zodiac Killer copycat was named Eddie Seda, and he was captured, mostly because of um, just his own feeble-minded behavior, rather than actually fracturing his criminal masterpiece, he was the guy that uh, shot his sister in the buttocks, and he was arrested for that, of course, and he didn't want to go to jail only for being the guy that shot his sister in the butt, so he ended up running his mouth a little bit, and it turned out he revealed a lot of information about being the New York Zodiac Killer copycat, but the only two people that visited him in prison were his mother and the sister that he shot in the butt. Terrible person, though. As far as why would the Zodiac Killer stop activities in 1974? Well, I know Richard Grinnell from ZodiacCiphers.com would disagree with that, and he has tried to persuade me that the Zodiac continued writing letters well into the 1980s, and that um, that the Zodiac was very active on pen. Just a lot of them have been dismissed, and someone... Oh, he was in a Soren Korsgaard's book, America's Jack the Ripper, when he says that the Zodiac was silent about the 1971 movie that was made about him. And the response I got from Richard Grinnell was, well, we aren't 100% sure of that. There could have been some type of communication that was written in that was just dismissed as a hoax or a copycat or a forgery 
that was not taken seriously, and that's why it was not well preserved. As for the question, why did the Zodiac stop writing letters, stop committing murders? Many people believe that after the Stein murder, that it's just what I said about the Wheel of Death theory, that the Zodiac simply thought that if he were to commit crimes and continue to do so, then he's going to get caught. It's just too dangerous. It's just too risky. He came too close to getting caught. He had his thrill kill. He had his moment of taunting the police. Now it's time to put an end to that and just concentrate on letter writing because it's less difficult to get captured. Bear in mind that DNA was not a thing back then. But other people think that he died. They think he went to jail. Mike Morford had a very interesting theory about that. And it was that his suspect, McDuff, was hired by the state of California in 1971, and that was a major life-changing moment for him. Somebody asked me the question, well, was McDuff the only guy that got a job in 1971? No, of course not. But it affected his life. It was actually a major life-changing event because McDuff would go on to spend 30-plus years with the state of California as an employee, working some of that time with the Department of Corrections, and then McDuff got married in 1974, and that's the same year that the Exorcist letter was mailed, and it's almost like putting an end to the Zodiac Killer uh, connection. And yes, that means it's all about sex. I mean, yes, I mean, just that, that he didn't have that type of component in his life, so he retaliated in a very destructive way, targeting lovers, lanes doing something like the Lake Perryessa stabbing, as well as um, just trying to taunt the police, trying to prove to the world and prove to himself that he's smarter, better, more cunning than everybody else. But then once he was actually incorporated into society, all of those activities stopped, and that's just what it was all about. Now, um, I've, I've talked about Macduff in a lot of other episodes, given everything I have to say about that particular suspect. I would invite you to check some of them out. Now, one piece of evidence that the Zodiac did indeed stop killing after the Stein shooting is found in the 340 cipher. This was not my own original observation. One of you guys in the comments section said this, and I'll just read the 340 solution provided by David Orenchak, Earl Van Eyck, and Sam Blake. I hope you're having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise all the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me, where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise, so they are afraid of death. I am not afraid because I know but my new life in paradise will be an easy one, paradise death. Okay, I'm sure you heard that. I now have enough slaves to work for me. Does that not suggest that this person is done killing? I know I shared some things with you guys in this episode, about my own original theory on the Wheel of Death and what it means, that it's meant to be from the Lake Berryessa stabbing, and there was the card that was mailed to Paul Avery 13 months to the day, September 27th of 69 to October 27th of 1970, where it revealed the Wheel of Death. 13 might factor in another way, or it's simply a number of bad luck. Lucky number 7, unlucky 13. Okay, but just that... Um, I've been wrong about things in the past, and one thing that I was wrong about was that the ciphers were created before the Zodiac started killing. I was like, if there is a single perpetrator, which many people believe there is, then it would go... I mean, I thought that this person had designed and planned all the ciphers from the beginning, and that they were released in calculated intervals. However... The solution to the 340 cipher completely challenges that. I was wrong about that, and I, I will admit it, because that line, that wasn't me on the TV, which brings up an interesting point about me. I'm not afraid of the gas chamber. That contains a contemporary reference to the time that there's no way that person knew that some imposter was going to go on the Jim Dunbar show, and that simply, um, it, no, I was wrong, but... This cipher was created after that person appeared on the show, which may have meant that the new theory that I proposed could have some some validity that someone wanted to commit four additional murders after Blue Rock Springs. After the Zodiac persona had been made available to the world, this person wanted to commit 
four crimes based on the Wheel of Death. And yes, I'm aware that um, on, there are other things on the Wheel of Death, like by arrow. However, that's a little hidden on the cover. Maybe that could have even been planned. But it got to a point where it was just too dangerous. Okay, I now have enough slaves to uh, work for me in paradise and you have nothing. Yeah, the person is just not going to try and commit any more physical crimes because they are going to get caught. And if, after looking into many different true crime cases, I will tell you one strong observation. Serial killers function on predatory instincts. They are predators, and if they believe that they are going to get captured, they will often change their behavior. It's not simply about just doing brash things. It's about doing activities that will not get them caught, because being captured is a form of defeat, and that does not show signs of power. Now, one person who would completely disagree with my observations on the case is Michael Cole, author of the Zodiac Revisited trilogy, and he believes more that the Zodiac is operating based on the solstices and the equinoxes, and that there are angles drawn on the maps, and that that the different crimes fall into different quadrants. Like if you were to put the Zodiac symbol on top of Mount Diablo, being on top of uh, Devil's Mountain, mind you, the epitome of evil, Diablo, Devil in Spanish, right? So even higher on the on the on the totem pole than the devil himself. This person is also committing a crime on December twentieth of nineteen sixty eight, the darkest night of the year. So the epitome of darkness, epitome of evil, all of these things were inspiring the killer. I don't I don't dispute any of that. But Michael Cole did give me a run for my money once when he proposed something that was a crime could have taken place on the spring equinox of nineteen sixty nine. Uh, March of 1969, by rope. However, the Zodiac was unsuccessful. Who's to say that this guy actually was successful every time he tried to do something? In theory, he shouldn't be, because the Zodiac was a pretty terrible murderer. Two of the victims survived. He would just sneak up on people and cowardly fire some gunshots and run away, with the exception of Lake Berryessa. And I fully admit, I don't know what happened. Michael Cole could be completely right about that, or it could be that two murders, I mean, there are really uh, three people were murdered from 1968 to 69, David Faraday, Betty Lou Jensen, and Darlene Farron. Then after announcing the uh, name Zodiac to the world, this person wanted to start the Wheel of Death, but it remained incomplete. Even after taking credit for the Kathleen Johns incident, it still remained incomplete. Well, um, would you like to uh, dispute that with me in the comment section? Would you like to challenge me on anything? Please uh, feel free to do so. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com, and you can always follow the show on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box, and Instagram as well. And I will see you over there on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.